Hi there, this is Grooving and G, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're back again in Renoise, and I'm going to do another big video on the Amen Break. In the last couple of weeks I've done a deep dive into break chopping and I've really tried to discover all the old techniques that they used to use with regards to pitching and time stretching and effects and I just want to make one more big video covering all of these topics. So we're going to start with an aim and break from scratch, I'm going to chop it up and then I'm going to show you from scratch how we can rework this amen, how we can get it running at the right tempo and really go over all the methods that they used to use back in the day. Okay, so I went and got my Amen break from this Rhythmland Breakbeats site. It just has lots of good high quality. It says here a lot of them are ripped from either vinyl or from CDs and they're not converted from MP3s to WAV. So this is a good place to find good quality versions of these old drum breaks. So if you go in here, you can find the Amen break. I think it's at the bottom somewhere under, um, under the Winston. So the Amen break is right at the, at the bottom of the page and you can just click on that and download it. So that's the, the version of the Amen I'm using here. Okay, so from the beginning now, I'm not gonna work with the whole Amen break here, I just wanna work with a small portion of it. So it's very common for, in Jungle to work with this last kind of two bars of the Amen break, but there's another really good chop in the middle here, which is a more of a rolling style amen. So the one at the, the, the end is great for crazy jungle and it's got the crash in it, but this one's quite nice if you just want to get a really cool rolling beat. So we're going to use this part of the amen and I'm going to chop it. I'm using command K to put in a marker and then command double click and I'll select all the area in front of that marker. And so that's the first chop and then I'm going to press enter to trigger it. And I can see here is where I want my next marker. I'm just gonna go and put one there, looks okay. I could maybe go a little bit more like there. Maybe the energy starts there. Cool, so I'm just trying to be as exact as I can and maybe loop it and just see if it rolls nicely. Cool, so we've got a really nice looping amen, uh, nice and clean. So the next step is to put in the slice markers. Now you can use this automatic slicing tool which is usually a good place to start. Just make sure that's on the first beat and then you can come in and you've always got to go and do some manual adjusting. It's just the way these things work is they're never 100% accurate. And I, I usually have snap off here as well and just do this all by, all by eye. Okay, so I've gone and chopped up this Amen. I've taken a minute over it and I've gone and made sure all these slices are nice and fine and exactly where I want them in the right places. So the next step is to right click and then hit slices, render slices to phrase. Okay, so this is now, if I press enter, it's gonna be super weird. Now what I've also got to do is mess with the lines per beat here in the phrase and also I've got to get my tempo up to 170. So let's first, let's do that. So actually just by putting my tempo up to 170, it seems to have mapped that out correctly. What it's doing is it's just cutting off the slices a little bit earlier, not playing the full decay of the slice and then triggering the new one on time. So it's it's actually really cool because you, you get quite a clean sounding break from it, which hasn't been time stretched. There's no artifacts in it and it's just cutting the decay off. If I show you in Logic how this works, I have a project here and I, what I've done is I've taken that same Amen break and I've done the same thing and chopped it all the slices and then I've converted it to a sampler. So this is what this, the break is like. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is actually speed up this MIDI so it fits in a two bar sequence at 170. Okay, and then what I can then do is if I bounce this down, you'll be able to see what's actually going on. What is happening here is these waveforms are actually exactly the same. So if you look, there's there's no time stretching going on at all. These this waveform, this one waveform match up entirely. But what's actually happened is when this waveform gets to about here, it's actually just cut this waveform off and dragged that next slice and put it like that. And that's what's happened. Okay. So you're just missing 
this last portion of the wave, but it means you don't have any artifacts from, from the time stretching. And this is actually how they used to do it. I was watching a Busy Bee tutorial and, and he was explaining it. They're actually just kind of gating the samples to get them to fit to your song tempo. So that's how you get this old technique going. And if I, if I just put a, um, a chop in there, a slice, I can then render to sample and I've now got this. This is the original one. If I go to the start. So I've now got it running at 170 and it's kind of like a version of time stretching, but you're not actually time stretching it. So there's a really cool technique of how to warp your breaks to a drum and bass tempo. I did show you my method, my other method, which is more of like an Akizer style stretching, which I can just show you quickly here. I set up this template. If I go into my effects, I have this time stretching template. And what is it is essentially doing is you're using the slice command to trigger loads of little different segments of the sample. And then the slices are mapping to your break. So if you hear, you can see I've put one slice all the way up to FF, from 0 to FF, and then I'm re-triggering the, the sample over and over again. And if I if you look in here, at the bottom, this really goes from 0 to FF. And what I'm essentially doing is just triggering all, like, slice 0 0, slice 0 1, slice 0 2, whatever, one by one. And then that's mapping to the BPM of my song. And so if I go and play it this way, and I need to change the lines per beat here. So that one's almost like too high the resolution, but if we keep going through. So this is the kind of Akiza style stretching, but you can, if you know, if I go and play this. You get that cool kind of granular stretching where it's chopping up those slices. So those are two kind of old school techniques for warping your breaks. But actually the, the one which doesn't use time stretching that is just kind of gating the samples gives you a much cleaner sound if you compare them to each other. If I go from this one, sounds just like a legit amen. And then back in here. These are all just kind of different resolutions I've done where I've changed, if you look up here, I've changed the number of lines and so that's giving me a different resolution of the grains. Uh, this is in one of my old Amen Breaks videos, I think I, I called it Time Stretching or something. Now another really cool thing BZB also showed in his video, but it took me a while to figure out, is you can do this cool thing where you start pitching up and down the Amen. I've got to hit this little sample button here. And then you've got to turn on transpose mode. So this now, when I go back into this main window, if I get rid of this, when I play up and down the keyboard, and I could like slow my breakdown, have a, have a slow down, low pitch version of the Amen. It's just cool for hip hop. Like I'm sure uh, some of those old boom bap tracks, they've used like a slow down version of the Amen like this. By having the beats in the right places, it allows you to do all this. And then once again, you can just render this out. And now I've got this cool. And you can go and chop that up again and use that for whatever. What we've got is this Amen with all the chops and we've we've rendered it to the phrase so it's matching the BPM of our song. And if I go back up to 170. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna duplicate this instrument and I'm then going to select all of the chops for the instrument and I'm going to right click and I'm gonna go destructively render slices. And we don't actually need this first slice so we can get rid of that. And so we've now got all the individual slices in here. Everything's still playing as usual. Now what you can do is you can actually swap out some of these hits. This is my aim and snare. I can come 
into my sample library maybe we'll just do it in here and go I've got all these samples let's put that in Okay, so I've just done a bit of rough processing, but I just wanted to make that break sound a bit fatter. And I've sent it to a little bit to a reverb. I've got some just kind of saturation and preamps on here. And I've got this hybrid version of the Amen where I've got exactly the same groove as an Amen, but I've created it using completely different drums. And what's cool about this is you can use this as a layer for your original Amen to kind of beef up the hits. So if I have a track running with my original Amen, and so you can you can layer hits very easily. If I just wanted to make a the the a kick a kick layer for the Amen, the best way to do this would be to just copy that instrument, destructively render the slices, come into this window, set up a new mod channel, and then put the volume on zero, which is essentially going to be like a mute track. And then I can send everything that's not a kick. So that's a snare. And I know these are all things. Leave that one. Not any of them. So now I've just got the kick layer and then the little roll layer. And so I can go and find myself a, a really good thing to layer with a generally with drum breaks, is nice punchy drum machine drums. And an 808 or a 909 is kind of a really good standard to go by. So if you're ever thinking like, uh, I want to lay in my drums, but I don't want to have to search through like loads of drum hits, just go to like 707, 808, 909. They're all really good for this. And they're just a great place to start with. And you're just using these drums for a kind of punch. You don't want them to be too rowdy usually. So I'm just trying to get the velocities a bit better and now I can layer that kit with my original Amen. And you can start to layer up your drums this way and you don't really have to worry about the timing of them because you're just using this replacement method. So I could then put like a filter on my original Amen. And you can start to lay your drums that way. So there's just a little idea for you. The coolest thing is to kind of just recreate the drum loops entirely. Like that, like I did in the first example. And then you can render that out to a sample. And then you can actually just chop this up like an original Amen, you know, and put your slice markers in again. This might actually slice quite nicely. So I was actually reading this special request article on Resident Advisor and he says this really cool thing where he, he talks about like what the secret is to the breakbeat chopping and it's kind of this technique in Renoise but it made me think of a way to kind of advance this and he's basically saying you've got a breakbeat and you chop it up into loads of different permutations and different start points. Then you map out all of those variations onto your keyboard so that each key is a different version of the same break. So that's essentially what we're doing. But what I thought you could do is, is if you recorded loads of different, and this might be what he's getting at, but if you recorded loads of different versions of the Amen, like a, like a comb filtered one, a time stretch one, pitch one, uh, phasing one, distorted versions of these chops, and then you resampled all of it and chopped it up again and put that all in a massive sampler. It would be a really crazy way of having like a massive Amen Breaks instrument. You could do this for any drum break, but a massive Amen Break instrument with loads of different effects and variations. So what I've got here is a audio editor and it's called Twisted Wave. And I'm just going to use this to record. I've got this audio input device and I've called it Super Audio Interface. That's just something I've created, but basically it allows me to monitor my system output of my computer. So I can just hit record here and then anything I play in Renoise 
is going to be recorded. Okay, so to set this up, I'm actually going to make some macros because I think it'll be quite fun to have some kind of macro controls to do all the effecting with. So we're going to create a modulations tab and we're going to put pitch on it. And I'm going to put an operand on pitch and then I'm going to map pitch here. So I can change pitch with a macro and then also a volume envelope. Um, I want to turn that off. So I can do some gating with a volume envelope. You just have the hold open. And let's map hold and decay and max like three seconds minimum 15 or something. Let's try this. That sounds quite cool. Uh, so we've got pitching, we've got gate, we now going to do a, a comb filter. So in this one, I'm actually going to use serum effects. And if I go into the effects window, I'm going to go into effects filter. And they have this comb filter in serum, which is awesome. And then you really, I'm going to give it a little bit of drive, I think. And I'm going to try and map uh, res. Effects, filter frequency, yeah, there's one. Holy nachos and resonance, that's the other one. Okay, learn quickly before I lose them. Really cool comb filtering effects there, which are sounding so gnarly. And I've just mapped this so I know that when I turn it on, this one's kind of mapping the on and off of that actual effect as well. I definitely want to filter. So let's go analog filter. Let's go and map the cutoff to macro. And I also want to map on off so that when it's in that state, it's off. Oh yeah, I don't, that's annoying. It's going like 50-50 to be on and off. So... Maybe if I do it like that. Or super steep. There we go. Perfect. So there I'm using the scaling to, because I just want it so it, when it's at the zero position, I want the filter cutoff to not be on at all. And then as I come in, I want to be able to use filter. Now the question is, do I want some res? I don't know if I care too much about res. Drive, maybe? Oh, yeah, let's map this to drive. Okay, so I've got comb, filter. What else do I want? Flanger can be cool sometimes. So I kind of want amount to go from 0 to 100 or 0 to 80. And then I'm going to map delay like this as well. And I kind of want the amount to go scale maybe slightly differently. Cool. And then I think I just want a distortion as the last step. So I know when flange is on nothing, it's doing nothing again. And then distortion, finally, fat warmth, something, and then just turn down the wet mix and just map this to wet mix, maybe. And then also map it to dry mix and invert the dry mix. So dry mix is going from nothing all the way down. And then I can turn up the amount of drive. So what I might do is put a gain plugin in and then map gain negatively. So it goes from nothing to say minus six. So when I pull this up, as the distortion increases the gain, I'm also pulling it out. Maybe a little bit too much, minus five.
cool. I've actually got a little MIDI controller called, if I hold it up here, which is called the Fader Fox. It's really dope. Little MIDI controller, and I'm gonna map all these macros to the different knobs on my MIDI controller. If I, so I go to Renoise MIDI map, let's go pitch and map that one, gate that one. I am in. So I know comb wants to be off, filter wants to be off, drive off, flat, everything off in the beginning, but pitch probably wants to be in the middle, doesn't it? So I'm gonna skip this and I'm gonna hit record and then make sure it's working. Okay, off we go. Okay, that was pretty crazy in the end. And I might normalize the sample, let's bounce it out. Um, yeah. So I had to go in Renoise at, at trying to chop this sample up, but I really, what I want to do is chop it every four bars or every two bars even, and then just have that as a massive instrument. And in Renoise, using this chop sample, it's only going to let me do a certain number of slices. So what I'm actually going to do is just come into Logic and just do this little bit of work in Logic because I'm just fighting with it in Renoise. So let's get the break in and you hold shift and I can chop all the chops equally and I can get rid of that last thing. And then I can just export all of these chops. So I've got this folder now and it has 179 slices, so it's not going to fit all into one instrument. But if I select 100, I think, I don't know what the most you can do in Renoise. Is it, is it 100? Let's try 100. 100 samples is going to go there. And that's a good start. So I've now got two massive Amen Chop effects instruments with just so much variation of the Amen. If I go through these slices on my keyboard, Dope. So let's just make a little pattern here now that we've got all these slices in. And I can actually just use a randomizer tool. Randomize notes. Selection. I want to do this custom mode and then just select all of the keys. And don't even preserve octaves and just have full randomization of all these keys. Cool, so that's just one, another one, randomize. So because all of these chops are just audio files and they're not actually sliced, the same as if I'd gone and rendered out all of these slices, what it means is that I can actually use the slice command and say to play in the middle of the file or choose to play in different sections of the file. So here I'm just... I'm trying to figure out where this one wants to go and I know that these patterns roll around in a 16 lines. So I'm guessing that by putting an S80, which is the middle of the hexadecimal sequence, at the middle point it will mean that there's some kind of continuation from this first chop, as in the, the break will be playing through its sequence but it will change chop midway through. That's my thinking anyway, I hope that made sense. Is if I copy this. That's playing normally, but if I press one up, cool. What well, I could even do, yeah, is pitch this one another quarter away and then change this. I've got my hexadecimal cheat sheet. This, this hexadecimal cheat sheet wasn't made by me, but I added 
these bottom layers to map percentage to hexadecimal and I can see like 80 there is 50% across but I want to know what 75% is and it's C naught so if I put C naught in here I've just got that last hit and S80 and then this one would be S40 and you can just go and put like random slices Whoa, and it's going to keep the same structure of the break. So the, the loops are going to play the same, but then I'm swapping slices at different points in the loops to give you loads of really, really crazy effects. And I can just, what I could do is say duplicate this. If I actually just go and press Alt Z twice, and then I press page down, and I can just copy this structure. Oh, it's going to get really crazy now. Let's just create a little section. <laughs> Okay, so I didn't want to spend too long making the track here because it's going to be a really long tutorial to cut up. And I think I got the, the idea out there. I might leave a, a, like making a, a track out of this one. But I just did a little demo idea um, with a re-space and whatever just to show you the potential of like, I literally did this in 10 minutes just using randomization to change the notes of these tracks. So here's my little outro. I kind of went into this technique as much as I could. I hope I've explained everything uh, cohesively because it's been a bit of a exploration for me as well. But anyway, that's all for me today. Peace.